problem 4.130 or 5.11 for the given textbooks. For details, please see the description below. In this problem, a well-insulated 3 meter by 4 meter by 6 meter room, initially at 7 Celsius, is heated by a radiator of a steam heating system. The radiator has a volume of 15 liters and is filled with a superheated vapor at 200 kilopascals and 200 Celsius. At this moment, both the inlet and the exit valves of the radiator are closed. A 120 watt fan is used to distribute the air in the room. The pressure of the steam is observed to drop from 100 kilopascals after 25 minutes as a result of the heat transfer to the room, assuming constant specific heats for the air at room temperature. Determine the average temperature of the air in 45 minutes. Assume air in the pressure in the room remains constant at 100 kilopascals. We start the process by a balance of energy. We got the amount of energy going in minus the amount of energy living is equal to the change of energy in the system. For this analysis, we're going to take the system to be the radiator. The radiator doesn't have energy going in. The only thing that it has is heat leaving the radiator. So we're going to take it as Q out. And this is equal to the change in internal energy, the change in potential energy, and the change in kinetic energy. Since the radiator is not moving or is not changing position, the only thing that we have left is the change of internal energy. And this is equal to the mass and the change of uh, u2 minus u1. And to get rid of the negative, simply q out is simply the mass and the change of u1 minus u2. State 1 is given to be a superheated vapor. Therefore, we go to table A6. We have a pressure of 200 kilopascals, which is equal to 0.2 megapascals, and a temperature of 200 Celsius. If we go to these values, we find that the um, specific volume is equal to 1.08049, and the value of the internal energy is equal to 26.54.6. Um, Reviewing the values for state 1, we find that the specific volume is 1.0849 meter cube per kilograms, and the specific internal energy is 2654.6 kilojoules per kilogram. At a state 2, the information that we have is that the pressure dropped to 100 kilopascals, and we know that the system, which is the radiator, is a fixed volume. Therefore, we could say that the specific volume at point one and at phase two are equal to each other. Now we need to determine what phase do we have. Therefore, we're going to go to table A5 since the value of the pressure is the one provided. We go to table A5 for 100 kilopascals and we look at the value of the saturated liquid uh, specific volume and the saturated vapor specific volume. We see that the value that we have is between those two. Therefore, uh, the phase in this uh, point is going to be a saturated mixture. Now that we determined that it's a saturated mixture, we're going to use the specific volumes to find the value of the quality. The value of the quality is provided to be uh, V2 minus Vf divided by Vg minus Vf. If we substitute these values, we find that the quality for the system is equal to 0 0.6376. And if we find the same relationships, we need to find the internal energy at the second point. This is going to be UF plus X, UG minus UF. Then we find that the value of U2 by substituting is equal to 1748.7 kilojoules per kilogram. In order to solve this equation, we need to first find the value of the mass. The mass is going to be calculated by using the value of the initial volume divided by the initial specific volume. This is equal, the initial volume is equal to 15 liters, which is equal to 0 0.015 meter cubed. And the initial specific volume is given to be 1.0849 uh, 
meter cubed per kilogram, meter cubed and meter cubed cancels, which gives us a unit of kilogram, which is mass, and that is going to be equal to 0 0.01388 kilograms. Now if we substitute back into this equation, Q out is going to be 0 0.01388 kilograms. The change of uh, internal energy, 2654.6 kilojoules, kilograms, minus 1748.7 kilojoules, kilograms. Notice kilograms cancel. And then we're simply left with 12.58 kilojoules. This is the heat that is being lost by the radiator and is the heat gained by the rod. The next step is to do a balance of energy in which we have the room to be the system. So we have the amount of energy in minus the amount of energy out is equal to the change of energy in the system. The amount of energy in is going to be the Q that it was lost by the radiator which goes into the room. We also have the work uh, by the fan and we also have boundary work that is being done due to a constant pressure in the, uh, in the room. The change of energy in the system includes internal change in internal energy, change in potential energy, and change in kinetic energy. Since the, move, the room is not moving uh, and it does not change position, the change in potential and kinetic energy are neglected. Therefore, the only um, item left is the change in internal energy. So we rewrite this and we move the boundary work to the other side. Therefore, the energy going in plus the work done by the fan is equal to the change of internal energy plus boundary work, which reduces to the change in enthalpy. The amount of heat going into the room was previously calculated, which is the amount of heat that was lost by the radiator. The work of the fan will be calculated by using the power uh, that came from the fan times the time that we run. So the work done by the fan is equal to the power times the time that it run for. In this case, it's going to be equal to 0.112 kilowatts. And it ran for 45 minutes. And by using the conversion, that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. If we multiply these values, we find 324 kilojoules. The next step is to calculate the change of en in enthalpy. Enthalpy, the change of enthalpy will be equal to the mass times the value of Cp average and the change that you have in temperatures 22 and T1. The reason we're allowed to use this approximation is because it's air and air is treated as an ideal gas. So we need to be able to first find the mass of air. That is going to be done by using ideal gas law. We use pressure 1, volume at point 1, the value of R and T1. The value for R for air is going to be 0 0.2870 kilopascals meter cubed uh, kilogram Kelvin. The initial uh, pressure that we have is equal to 100 kilopascals. The initial volume for the room is equal to 3 meters by 4 meters by 6 meters, which is equal to 72 meter cubed. We divide by the value of R, 0 0.2870 kilopascals meter cubed kilogram Kelvin. And then the temperature at, um, at 0.1 is equal to 7 Celsius, and Kelvin is equal to 280 Kelvin. Notice Kelvin and Kelvin cancels, meter cube and meter cube cancels, kilopascal and kilopascal cancels. The unit left is kilograms, which is the unit of mass. This gives us a mass of 89.60 kilograms. Now that we have all the quantities, we substitute. The only thing that we're missing is the value of Cp average. When it's calculated, it's usually evaluated at the average temperature. 
However, for this problem, we do not have the final temperature, so we're going to find the value of Cp at 7 uh, Celsius, and we take that value to be 1.005 kilojoules kilogram um, Kelvin. If we substitute now into the um, equation, we find the Qn is the value that we found originally for the heat uh, leaving the radiator, which is equal to 12.58 kilojoules. We got the work of the fan to be 324 kilojoules. We have the mass to be 89 per 6.6 kilograms. We have the value of Cp to be 1.005 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin. The value of T2 is unknown and the value of T1 is equal to 7 Celsius. If we solve this equation for T2, we find that the final temperature is equal to 10.7 Celsius. Notice that uh, there is a change of temperature total for this, pro for this process and that is equal to 3.7 degrees and that takes place in about 45 minutes. Please note that the final temperature is uh, considerably close to the initial temperature which allows us to use that approximation for Cp to be at 7 Celsius. If the temperature had been significantly higher you would have had to do a trial and, uh, trial and error process in which you will have to find the average value of Cp with the new value of the temperature and do the process again to find the value of T2 and then this process, do this process um, as many times as necessary until you get a value of T2 that it is not affected significantly by the value of the average of Cp.